All right, so as you can see, I have a special guest here. This is my fiance, Keith. He is a software engineer. He has been, or I've been wanting to get him on my channel for a long time and I'm finally doing it. And I thought this was the perfect video to do it for because I've had about three or four, maybe more people ask me about how I feel about AI and how it's taking over the tech industry and you know erasing jobs for software engineers and web developers. And at first I honestly wasn't gonna do any type of content on this because I just didn't feel comfortable with it. But I think that I'm at a place now where I can kind of speak on it as I you know how I feel right now and of course things are subject to change as the years go by but this is a video where we're gonna talk about how we feel about it right now so the main question I've actually gotten is just straight how do you feel about chat GPT and AI and are you afraid of how it is going to you know conflict with us being programmers so I just wanted to get it out there that I'm a web developer I focus on front-end web development I am learning about backend so that I can become a full stack developer and you are a software engineer so we putting our roles out there just so you guys get a better perspective as it pertains to us because we've actually worked in the tech field under these roles he's still working at his job but i you know have left the creative agency but i'm still in the uh field so most of my comments i feel like have come from students that are studying computer science right now and their you know studies and they are afraid that they are going to be jobless when they get out of school they're wondering if they made the right decision but some of them have even been from you guys who haven't had your first tech role and you're afraid like do i even need to learn how to code is it pointless is it over for developers so we wanted to kind of share our experiences and our thought processes as far as how we feel about it and again this is a disclaimer that this is how we feel right now based off of the current situation so this is subject to change but i did want to get this out to you i was not gonna film this video because I didn't really want to speak on it, but I think I'm in a good place to speak on it right now. So I'll let you go first. How do you feel about AI and particularly like ChatGPT as it pertains to programming? Uh, so when it comes to programming, I really feel like ChatGPT is a tool. Um, I really don't see it as a, a thing that's going to wipe us out as of yet. Uh, we may, you know, it may be a time where that comes, but as of right now, I just really see it as a tool. So I personally used it to create, it was like a bot of sorts. Uh, I got a list of uh, company names and then a list of company emails. And then the bot dynamically changed uh, the name per email mm -hmm. and then sent uh, a body of the email out to prospective companies that I wanted to collaborate with, uh, like on my Instagram and stuff. So you literally created a bot using ChatGPT to essentially cut your time that the task would take more than half because we try to collect like names and emails for companies before to do freelancing work and it's taken us weeks if not a full month before we even got to the part of sending out the emails and then you know creating the work for clients if we got them so he's taking something that he created from chat gpt using what python so that's the thing too like i have experience with python but i'm not going to say i'm a python developer by no means mm -hmm. Uh, so using ChatGPT to then create, you know, this bot using Python, I mean, that's pretty powerful. So Yeah. And you were able to create something that, like I said, it cut the time in more than half and allowed you to literally just sit back and let it do the work. And it only took you, I think you were working on that for like a week, maybe? It uh, wasn't even maybe yeah, that. Not even really a week. I would say a few days. And then the thing that I found that was really cool about, you know, the whole process was when I came into an error or, I, you know, I found something wrong in the code, I just spit it right back to ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, kind of we was, you know, kind of working together. So it was mm -hmm. kind of like a collab almost. Uh, but did you feel that if you didn't really know anything about code or you had those coding skills or the programmer mindset, like the computational thinking, the things that you know that it takes to be a programmer, it would have been as easy or would you have gotten lost? You get what I'm trying to say? Because yeah, no. I think, uh, so it was yeah. definitely times that uh, because, you know, I am a software engineer, I knew yeah. certain things to look for. And I actually corrected ChatGPT, you know, either like yeah. once or twice, like, hey, you know, uh, maybe we should do this or, you know, this doesn't look right. And it would, you know, apologize. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah, like it was kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a like, smart tool. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. But like, I mean, it's a tool, like you said. Yeah, but uh, I think that that's a great thing to mention is that um, a lot of people are thinking that, you know, maybe you can just go into this without any background in development and any knowledge of coding. But I, I feel that you may need to have just a little bit just to understand what to even ask it mm -hmm. and to understand, like he said, when it's throwing an error, what does that even mean? Or if they give you a block of code and you're like, this doesn't work, how do I even go about correcting it? So I do still feel like you still need to have some type of like 
coding yeah. abilities. So you guys know that I was working at a digital creative agency. And from my perspective, right before I left, we started to talk about these AI tools and how we felt and is this a threat? And the thing that I noticed was that at my company, my company is more, or it was more, you know, of a small company compared to like a fame company. There were only like 40 people in my building. And their perspective was, you know, we still want people who can do the real thing. So we're not gonna jump to get, you know, AI to do all of our designs when we have these amazingly talented designers, because at the end of the day, yes, we have these, this AI art and things like that, but sometimes there's nothing, or most times there's nothing like the real thing from a real person who is like truly talented and knowledgeable about what it is that they're creating, whether it's art, whether it's design. So a lot of the upper ups there were like, you know, like you guys, you know, in that space are fine. Like we are not gonna replace you with AI. And I think that they will stand by that no matter how advanced these things get because they understand the true value of having a real human doing their real, you know, showing their real talents in the spaces that they're in. And so I think that put in perspective that maybe a lot of these things, these news articles and different things like that. And honestly, guys, I haven't done too much research on this, but just from what I've seen, I feel like this is definitely something that will impact like the fame companies more so than your smaller digital agencies, creative agencies, uh, the different marketing agencies that are like, you know, you know, the owner, they're so small that you know, the owner and different startups um, and even different companies that are like yours that are larger than where I was working, but um, it's not like a fame company. And I think that that's important to remember is that when you're getting into development and you're learning how to program, Fang is not your only option. And if you're not aware about what like Fang and like our Mang is, um, that is Meta, Amazon, Apple, uh, Netflix, and Google. So there are other jobs, guys, that you can get outside of these Tons. huge companies. So yeah. Like you've gone on interviews for, I think, an array of different spaces, sure. startups, big companies, like hospital, like a uh, medical field, mm -hmm. um, tons of different opportunities. Like American that. Airlines, like just to end up in government, which is totally different from what I do. General like, Electric. Yeah. Like, so many. Yeah, it's like, so I want you guys to put that in perspective too, that yes, this is affecting some jobs or it could affect jobs, but at the same time, don't forget about the thousands, if not millions of jobs that are out here. And we as developers and programmers, you guys as programmers are still, the numbers are still in a negative as far as how many of us there are compared to the number of jobs that they need to fill. So I just want you guys to remember that. And I also just want to mention that as a developer, you know, you should really be using ChatGPT to enhance your process. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, I have an idea or rather I'm part of a startup uh, with my cousin out in Seattle. And I have an idea, you know, to use Python and it's, it's called PyTorch. Uh, it's like an AI tool. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not going to go into it, but it's kind of in depth and it's kind of, you know, compared to what I do for my job, like it's kind of high level, like programming and coding. Um, but using ChatGPT to break it down in like individual steps that I can follow myself. I mean, it makes the process, you know, not easy, but, you know, very simple to follow mm -hmm. instead of just using like documentation or yeah. trying to Google some things. Now I can use ChatGPT to really break down these steps for me and it just, you know, just makes it easier. So yeah. use ChatGPT out there. Yeah. So you're like talking about using it as a tool to then integrate into other projects and um, just using AI in general to enhance your projects that you maybe hard coded or different, you know, different things like that. So, yeah, that's a different perspective, too, is like learn instead of, I think, being afraid of AI, learn how you can use it. Like you said, how can I use this more as a tool? How can I implement this into the skill set that I already know? and I'm already using to enhance things that I'm already building. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys to actually go out and do this now because again, this stuff is still new, but maybe even start to think of ways you can tell prospective employers how you use ChatGPT to build different projects because that'll show that you know how to use the tool so that if they do ever wanna use the tool or they do wanna start implementing it just to make some of the tasks a little quicker or make them a little easier, you already have put in their ear that you have experience and you can show them because you like your, your project with your bots with the emails that's something that he could put on a resume as a project he's built and say like hey i use um, python but i actually use chat gpt to help me and it shows that you know how to talk to the ai technology so that could actually help you
Another thing that I really wanted to mention about ChatGPT and using AI is the fact that you don't have to always focus on going out and getting a job. You don't have to focus on like going out and working for a fame company or a startup or anything like that. You can start your own thing. You can become a blogger who writes about these technologies that you're learning, um, who writes about the things that you know how to do, the things that you've built. Like if you build a project, you can go and write a blog about how you went about building that, the different step-by-step -step process, because blogs are very much alive and very much a useful tool and things that other companies if you do want to work for a company would still look for and then you're getting into other development or um, tech roles such as DevRel which is Dev Relationships or you may have heard it as um, developer advocate where you're actually knowledgeable about a particular technology that your company will be using and your role is to create content is to create blogs is to know about that you know, technology to then tell the developers how to use it, give them help when they need to use it, give them confidence to use it. So you don't actually have to get hired as a developer or a programmer that's necessarily coding all the time, but you take those things, you, you wanna know how to code to be able to then take those things and apply it to a role such as like a dev role. So there's different options. You can become a freelancer. You can start your own startup. You can start your own creative agency. So I think that, you know, this is a beautiful time as well because those things can help you start your business. Like we've used it to, you know, help us when it comes to freelancing or comes to, you know, finding clients. So I think I would want to focus more on like the positive things because it's not going anywhere. It's only going to, we see how much it's um, increased in just a little bit of time from when it was released. And I don't think that it's going anywhere. So it's like, learn about it as much as you can, if this is what you want to do, but don't allow it to scare you off from wanting to be able to learn how to code. So you already mentioned how this could be a tool and I've mentioned how, you know, you don't have to necessarily go out and get a job if that's not what you want to do, but also understand that if you want to get a job, like I said, currently right now, the numbers are still in the negative. So this is still something that you can very much so get a job doing. I don't think that that part has changed at all. Um, so don't be afraid to continue your learnings and continue going through school, whatever your space is, because you're still needed. Because I don't think that this is something that's gonna happen overnight or even in the next, what, five years? And you made a good point one time when we were just talking candidly, um, just here at, the, uh, at home, about how you felt that, you know, this is no different from any other industry when they advance in something. You either, sure. you know, learn about it, you want to go into that, you either learn about it or you don't. So, yeah, basically, I was saying, I don't remember the exact kind of quote I was giving, but, you know, um, you know, things advance. So either you're going to, you know, get with it or you're going to get left. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure, like, you know, when the internet started, you know, journalists was out here, like, you know, oh, it's over for us. You know, the internet's going to replace all our newspapers, but, I feel like, you know, people are going to be found mm -hmm. uh, if you're really good at something, you know, now instead of a, a journalist, you can become a blogger or something, mm -hmm. you know, when the Internet came along. So there's always ways to use your writing skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like how you mentioned newspapers, because if we look at like when blogging or writing on the Internet first started, that was years ago. And people are still getting newspapers. It might not be as prevalent, but just look at that time span of how like newspaper is still used because like our grandparents are still here and they might not want to read blogs and, you know, read about the news online. They would want that physical, traditional newspaper. You can still buy them at stores. So I think that puts in perspective, too, that, yes, we got that new technology a long time ago, but newspapers are still not even 100 percent phased out. So I think basically what we're trying to say is that you know, whether this is something that takes over our jobs or not, this is not something that is going to happen overnight. And even if it does start, let's just say that AI does start to take over in the sense of it's like replacing people's jobs. You still need people to run the AI and to talk to the, you know, tools that are used for AI and to even create the AI. The AI is created off of technology. So I feel like there's always going to be a space or a way that you can find your way in to use your skill set. And i definitely don't think that you should stop learning how to code. I don't think that you should be scared of this. Um, like I said, we see these different improvements and trajectories in every industry, the automotive industry. There's so many different things where I'm sure people, you know, before we were even born and thought of, thought they were going to be phased out, but they learned how to, um, I guess, adjust and they learned how to use those new technologies so that they weren't phased out. And now they're just doing things and it's just normal. So I think the last thing that I wanna kind of mention is if you are very afraid of ChatGPT or AI tools in general in the space that we are in, 
write down the backup plan, write down all the ways that you can use your skill set of knowing how to code, like you know about these different technologies. How could you possibly use that in other spaces and still be part of the tech field contributing to the technology uh, world? Whether it's like I mentioned before, becoming a DevRel or a developer advocate, blogging, creating your own business, because there's always going to be a way that you can apply these skills. So I just don't feel like you should be afraid of it and just maybe learn more about it because like with anything else in the world i feel like the more knowledgeable you are on a subject the less intimidating and scary it might be so i kind of wanted to hear from you just as like a last you know tip or you know piece of advice for people who may be afraid and what you think they should be doing or how they can go about changing their perspective to be like less afraid about it uh the best thing that you can do is just immerse yourself in it like go to i think it's like openai.com mm -hmm. or just google openai chat gpt sign up for an account is free uh version 3.5 is free version 4.0 i think is like 20 a month that you know i personally pay for it mm -hmm. um but yeah you don't have to use the 4.0 just immerse yourself in it go try to do some things mm -hmm. just write some prompts, ask it some questions, uh, watch a YouTube video about how to create, you know, uh, the right kind of prompts. So yeah, immerse yourself in it. And then as like a last thing, if you're still like, if this didn't do it for you and you still want to like, you know, indulge in some content about people that are talking about this topic right now, you have a friend on Instagram that gives a lot of information on how to use AI. And there's like a lot of things that you can do outside of just coding. So just being aware of all the things that you can do with it, it might open your mind up. So what's his name? It's uh, at Mr. Grateful on Instagram. I'm, I think it, it may be Mr. Dot Grateful or it may just be Mr. Grateful. Yeah. If you look up Mr. Grateful, you'll find him. So. Yeah, we'll put it in the description below. He has a really cool, unique story and he's over 100K now, right? Yeah, he had a challenge. It was uh, he wanted to expand his or grow his Instagram to 100,000 plus followers in 30 days. And he definitely did it. So. Using AI. Yeah, using so, AI. That yeah. Was the thing. So this is like an, an example. That's a direct example of like how you can use this in other ways or to benefit you. Um, also, for me, I would recommend watching youtubers like tiff in tech and all of these will be in the description below so if you're interested just please read the description you guys know i try to drop as many gems down there as i can but tiff in tech um real Krishan gave a really good perspective on this i believe even leon noel um the person who is over the boot camp that i just posted about in my last video has talked about this and how you shouldn't be afraid and then i want to say dorian develops has touched on this before and i love his content so anybody we just mentioned will be in the description below highly recommend checking out their content so that you can uh tiffin tech gives really good uh, advice and different content on how to use ai and what you can use it for so just check out some more youtubers and get a different perspective but i think overall our point in this video is to say to answer your question no we're not afraid right exactly. um there's always going to be something for you god is always going to take care of us no matter what so i think even having that perspective in general to know that you're going to be taken care of by God is just kind of like, you ain't got to be afraid anyway. So, <laughs> um, so hopefully this helped. I'm so happy that you finally got on one of my videos. I hope to get you on more of my videos. I still want to do a sit down with Keith talking about his journey and how he got into tech, because like I said, it's, there's some similarities, but there's a lot of differences and even what you do in general is different. So I will post his channel below as well. If you want to check him out, I'll also put his Instagram because he's more active over there. So if you guys have any questions for him or want to connect with him on any way, um, hit them up. So tell them how they can find you though. Uh, you can find me at Keith Ken code on pretty much any platform. Uh, I'm most active on Instagram. Uh, I'm a short form kind of guy. This long form <laughs> content really isn't me. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple YouTube <laughs> videos. People have been asking me to get back active. So I I'm definitely going to do it for you guys. That's why it's taken so long for me to get him on here because I like to talk. He doesn't like to talk at all. So Instagram is harder for me. And YouTube is harder for him, which you'll see the numbers on our platforms reflect that. So, <laughs> so thank you for being here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for giving your perspective. And hopefully this gives you a little bit more confidence and a little bit more peace and calm when it comes to your coding abilities and what you want to do in the industry. And I think the biggest thing we want to leave you guys with is no, we're not afraid. You shouldn't be afraid. Continue coding, continue learning learn more about open ai and chat gpt and all the ai tools that are out there as you have time to you know squeeze it into your already busy lives but don't allow it to hinder you or stop you from learning overall so continue coding continue doing what you want to do and 
you'll be good. So I think that's it. We'll see you in the next one.